So far, January and February have been the absolute worst months in sales that I've ever experienced when it comes to reselling. And I have tried to figure out why. Hey, what's up everybody? It's Tony, I'm back on the channel. I know I've been gone for a few, but I've been a little busy. I'm trying to sell more stuff, list more stuff. I have so much to list and so far, January and February have been the absolute worst months in sales that I've ever experienced when it comes to reselling. And I have tried to figure out why. So this video is going to be about figuring out why January and February sales are so bad. Uh, what could be the main reasons and what to do about it. Because sometimes we can't just sit, cross our arms, cross our legs and just be like, you know what, screw it. Or just give up. So... Being that said, let's get right into it. Let's see what's going on and what can we do? What can I do? And share my personal experience. What am I going to do to increase myself? Something maybe you can do as well. And so in case you're experiencing some loss, you know, some low sales, something you may want to do, trends and whatnot. So that way, at least you guys can maybe have some ideas and try to pick up some sales, sell some different items and whatnot. So let's get right to it. So to share in the month of January, what I have done in terms of sales. Uh, so far, I only did about a thousand, one thousand one hundred twenty-three dollars and ten cents of sales. So roughly, my net profit is eight hundred forty-six dollars and seventy-three cents, and that's across every single platform from eBay all the way to Poshmark and Mercari and cash sales. And it's been pretty really difficult, um, especially January. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll know that I was suspended on, well, restricted, not suspended, restricted on eBay because I was linked to my brother's account and he was restricted because he had too many inquiries open at the same time. So that resulted in me not being able to list or sell for about three weeks, which is pretty bad for business. And eBay, I don't know, they're, every time I call, their explanation is that we're linked. And clearly, I tried to explain that we never sold the same items, never listed the same items, and our addresses were completely different. So, just because we have the same last name, eBay restricted my account, my sister's account, my father's account. So there you go, eBay, and it's really flawed policy. I, I cannot tell you, I was aggravated for a good three weeks trying to get myself back on track, back on business to list and whatnot, because I went top rated. So that means I can request for an increase. I can get the top rated badge on my listings and whatnot, but stuff happened. So I was just listing on Poshmark and Mercari as much as I could and still almost no sales. It, it was crazy. And the month of January is crazy. And February, the same thing happened. I actually only made, if I look at my computer real quick, I only did a thousand one hundred eighty-one dollars sixty-five cents this month of uh, February. I ended at that. My gross earnings was eight hundred fifty-seven dollars and seventy-five cents. And I actually started to uh, list on Amazon because I had a few items that were completely brand new, and I can merchant fulfill it on Amazon. And I only did one sale. So there you go, that, that's how bad it is. And and to a little bit more about what I sell, particularly, I sell clothing. That's it, that's all I sell is clothing. So that is one fault that may happen if you sell only one particular line of product and let's say not much is selling, then what else do you have to fall back onto? So I asked myself that question, I'm like, okay, what else can we sell? Because right now clothing is, not really selling. I mean, I know I take good pictures. Um, I use the Terapeak research on eBay. If you don't know what that is, if you have a business account, I believe you have, or a subscription or store, you have access to the Terapeak uh, research on eBay. So you can research keywords, what people are looking at, trends and whatnot. And that helps out a lot. It does. Um, I mean, it's not like I've sold nothing. I've sold some stuff, but at the end of the day, it's still pretty low for compared to what I was selling last year. So I had to, to sit down, think hard, reasons why I was not selling and reasons and things I can do to sell items. 
So one thing I'm going to start doing is I'm going to diversify what I sell. Not just clothing, but another area of expertise that I have, which is training cards and collectibles. Um, games, not so much because I, I barely play video games, but I used to collect Yu-Gi-Oh cards and Pokemon cards, especially Yu-Gi-Oh cards. I mean, I used to collect a whole bunch and ever since I was little, all the way to about 22 years old, I'm 30, right? I'm almost 30. I'm 29. I used to collect a lot. And when I mean a lot, I used to have a rare amount of Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Um, the first editions, the first ones that ever came out. Uh, if you collect Yu-Gi-Oh, you know, I had Blue Eyes, White Dragon, The Dark Magician, all first editions when they first came out. And most and some of them were from booster packs too. So I know those are pretty valuable. And I was sitting on a little gold mine. Had I kept them, PSA graded them, known what, what they would have been in the future, Ah oh, man, um, I literally, t if I would have January or February been like, okay, what else can I sell? I would just launch that on on my site, uh, on eBay, probably even on my website, and I probably would have made a good maybe ten to twenty thousand dollars in one month. That's how crazy it is. Um, I didn't know, so I realized, okay, I know about this. I may have to research it again because it's been a while since I've collected. It's been a while since I even played the game, so. I went back, I researched, I even went back to watch some cartoons just to get the gist of the actual cartoon and feeling it. It's a whole lot of research to go into collecting these things because it's not just buying a pack and be like, oh yeah, I got this card. Um, it goes a lot into it, what people are into, um, what cards are valuable, prints, um, misprints, uh, stuff that's been reprinted. Uh, it's crazy. So, and just to show you, let me show you what I got so far and what I'll be opening up in my next video. All right, so, so far, the only two things that I have on my hand, because I ordered a whole bunch of stuff, is uh, these two Maximum Gold. I gave one for my, I gave one to my brother. I had three of them, but I gave one to my brother for his birthday. So, he opened one up. And I'm hoping to get, there's a few cards, in, there's only, truly, two cards in here that I really want. There's a red eyes Black Dragon, and Blue-Eyes White Dragon. And, and as soon as, if I get them, I'll PSA grade them right away. Uh, that That's the thing. And it was like the 25th anniversary for, um, I think it was Pokemon General Mills. They came out, they uh, did a collaboration with Pokemon. I got five cereals, I got five packs. Um, ended up giving like one or two cereals away and keeping the rest because I like cereal and I like to eat a lot. So, yeah. So I kept like, four, I got five cereals, I kept two. And I gave the rest away because... I kept two because I like to eat a lot and you know I'm fat. I got the structure deck from Blue Eyes White Dragons. I haven't opened it yet. I don't think I'll ever open it. I don't know if I will. I have to think about it because um, you never know. Once you sell out, they might become rare. Hold it and then when eventually it's time to sell, you sell it out. And yeah, there's there's a whole bunch of stuff here. So there you go. You know, some different things that you can sell. Um, the one thing that's hard to come across is Funko Pops. Um, I haven't been able to come across, across a lot or something or rare ones. Um, this could be do right here. So basically collectibles too, like this Yoda here, except I kept it because I'm a big nerd. So I'm actually going to include Yoda in my segment. So <laughs> this is interactive. So as soon as I put the batteries in this guy, the next segment we have, we're going to have a Ask Mr. Yoda segment. Or I might do that on my Instagram like a daily segment where I just ask Yoda something and he interacts with me so it's gonna be crazy uh, that's an idea I've had and I'm gonna keep it and you got Vader in the back too I'm definitely keeping that um, so yeah it's basically just diversifying what I'm gonna sell so that way I'm not stuck with just selling clothes and then all of a sudden let's say clothes are not selling and then I'm stuck with okay what else do I sell what do I do because I definitely don't want to go back to work for somebody else. That's that's a big no for me. I've done it. I've been through it. And I don't want to go through it again. So that's no. Hell no. Um, so that's something I'm going to be doing. I'm doing uh, unpacking some uh, package. Some uh, Yu-Gi-Oh cards. I've ordered uh, a few more items that are supposed to come in. So I'm definitely going to be doing that. So if you like watching those videos. You like watching people unpack Yu-Gi-Oh's. Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh cards. See what they get. I'm going to be doing that too. I'm probably going to be doing at least one video a week because I am really busy. Um, I have still have like about 380 articles of clothing to, to list on my eBay. So I have quite the work cut out for me. So I'm definitely doing at least two videos a week. And that's the max that I can do. 
and that way at least I share what I've actually sold uh, and you know some of the clothing that I've actually some of the brands that I've been selling for clothing if you want to hear it is uh, John Mavratos I have John Mavratos I had uh, Versace jeans which I got from Marshalls I threw I actually got Versace jeans and I uh, did some I guess some thrifting in Marshalls and I, I managed to get two of them the only two in stock bought them boom and sold them uh, managed to get coats were in uh, I sold a, a hard shade for Max Schaffner Max um, Calvin Klein I, I've sold uh, Ugo Boss dress pants some of them some of them are still on my eBay and all for sale so those are really difficult especially when they're already hemmed so it's like you know you got the person that buys it literally has to match that specific size and measurements that's the only thing I don't like about some of the suit pants that you get I get from liquidation pallets, they're already hemmed. So, you know, when I see it's hemmed, I'm like, Argh. now I got to list it, wait for the person to, to look at me, oh, it's my size, yay, and then click buy, boom. It has happened. I, I've actually sold the most weirdest size that I've, I've never thought I was ever going to sell. One was 30 by 25, right? And I'm like, who who is 30 by 25? And I'm like, there's only a few people in the world that I know that are 30 and 25, um, that short people, right? And... And there's, but that goes to show there's something for everybody too. So it's not like you see it's already happening and you're going to give up right off the back. There's always something for everybody. So that that's one of the things, never give up. I'm, I've never, I'm not going to give up. Also, another thing you might want to do to improve your listings. So that way you improve your sales. If you want to stick to your niche, um, picture wise, right? You might, you might want to make your pictures more like a stock picture. I have a uh, an app, it's called Photo Room, and that app is pretty cool. It, of course, you have to pay to get the watermark removed, but Photo Room basically turns your picture into a stock picture. It deletes the the background, and all you see is white and the item, and it makes it pop out. Actually, it makes it look really nice. That's how I managed to sell some of these clothing because at the end of the day, person comes, looks at picture and the picture sells so the picture looks professional looks clean they like it it attracts them and makes them want to buy it boom you get that you you pass the threshold where the person clicks buy buy now and then pays for it so that's something you may want to consider um it's not that expensive it is an extra expensive if you're already if you're already actually um paying for an app or paying for subscriptions um but photo room could be a good investment to improve your pictures and as well as keywords for listing if you do have a store use terra peak research use it it's it's there if you got a subscription it's available to you use it it's a very valuable tool you'll get the keywords that you need to use in your listings in order to improve your sales and get more sales get more views get more watchers get your listings out there to match what people are actually searching up it's crazy because i've been doing that and and I've, I've been getting a lot of views. I mean, not that it also influences that I'm top rated now, so my stuff gets to go to the top of the list. Um, but at the same time, keywords. Remember, eBay is a search engine, so you're going to want to put in the right keywords in order to get more views and more watches on your items. So guys, uh, take into that account. If Drop a comment if you want to go a little bit more into photo room i actually did a video on how to use photo room it's a really short one so if you want to scroll through my channel you can or i'll leave the link in in the bio i'm in the bio i'll leave the link in the description so that way you guys can look at it and it's also in my channel so you can scoop through it's the last video i did and it's pretty simple take pictures uh the lead background and boom you may you'll see how you get a stock photo straight from your phone you don't even have to um do any extra steps it's pretty simple to use that's why i like photo room a lot if you want to cross this this perfectly is also a really good um that's the one i use it helps me a lot i save time just listing across every single platform that i have to list uh, they recently actually changed their their layout so I, I may do a video going through that um if you actually are interested in seeing more of this perfectly uh, i'm not sponsored by them by the way i'm I just like the product so much that I talk about it. So if you do want to know about more more about this perfectly or see how it works, 
out in person or see me uh, go through the motions of listening through this perfectly, uh, just drop a comment below and just say list perfectly. And then that way I know how many people are seeing or actually want to see it. And if there's enough demand, I'll do a video on that as well. Um, so guys, just make sure you um, like and subscribe this video, especially if you're looking forward to me unpacking these guys, unpacking this. I'm also getting Rage Raw. Um, if you're seeing more of my uh, selling tips and whatnot, on my process, my journey of selling uh, what I sell every month. So if you want to see through that, just make sure you like and subscribe. It also helps getting this video out into the rest of the YouTube algorithm. The more likes and the more subscribes it gets, even if it's just a quick thumbs up, uh, the more the video goes out and more people see it. So that's something that will definitely help me out a lot. So thank you guys for watching. I truly appreciate it. And um, and leave, leave, drop a comment below too if, if you're having so sales, any advice you want to give the community on what to do to improve sales, what your opinion is on, on the current situation. And it could just be that people just ran out of money and the economy is low. I want to believe is that, but at the same time, I can't just sit around and wait for the economy to pick up. So I'm going to have to just simply diversify what I sell, go back to, to what I know as well. It's something I know that I used to know a lot about. So just go back, learn it and try to sell that as well. Thank you guys for watching again. This is Tony and I'm out.